This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917, and sponsored in part by Turniff Island Resort, your private Caribbean island. Welcome to Belize. I'm standing on an ancient Mayan site dating way back to 250 BC. It's astounding to think that there were more people living here back then than there are today. On this show, we're heading offshore to Turniff Island to go and look for red-footed boobies. But before we do that, we're going to have a great time birding around these spectacular ruins. Let's go birding. Now is the time of your life. Oh, now is the time it's a swing right to the end of the line. Now is the time. Ponies. Did you see that bird? And this is the perfect habitat for this bird. Beautiful plumes. Look at the plumes on the neck and the head. Yeah! That's what I call birding. Awesome! That's our golden bird. Turniff Island is such an easy destination to travel to. It's literally an hour and 45 minutes flight from Miami into Belize and then it's a boat trip across to the island. The wonderful thing about the staff at Turniff Island is that they'll organize trips for you as well. If you wanna go and see the Mayan ruins or you wanna go and do some birding on the mainland of Belize, they'll happily organize that for you. They've got great guides, they've got great service and they'll make your birding excursion to Belize an absolute pleasure. Our host at Turniff Island took us out on a great tour to Al Tunha ruins. This place is not just steeped in incredible history, but also offers some pretty good birding. And we walked along the paths here and came across some great species like pale-billed woodpeckers, groove-billed annies, black-headed trogons, and even some North American species like yellow-throated warblers. Our guide, Gustavo, has a wealth of knowledge about this very, very important site. This is one of the largest temples uh, what exists in Altunha. The largest temple is known as the Sun God Temple. It was finished constructed by 650 AD. Altunha is one of the few sites in our country that does not have the original name because when it was discovered, they did not found any glyphs or any other information of what would be the name of the site but the name of the site was given due to a reservoir located this direction and the location of it is the coercion of water around it and around it they had limestone rock. So a word translated rockstone water means Altun Ha, a Yucatec Maya word. There's a lot of people who come to the site for being that is one of the most important sites uh, location wise and more than likely due to the birding which in, in our country, we have a little bit over 560 different species of birds in our country. A trip to the Belize Zoo organized by the resort is also an unforgettable experience getting the chance to see a world-class zoo that's doing incredible conservation work is very heartening. And to meet Sharon and talk about the harpy eagles and the reintroduction of harpy eagles in Central and South America was absolutely fantastic. Well, harpy eagles, first of all, are considered to be extirpated from Central America. There are so few left. And we are in a very, well, it's a profound program in uh, collaboration with the Belize government and Peregrine Fund, where these guys are, are bred in captivity, trained to be independent hunters, and then released back into forests where they've been wiped out. We've released 15 so far. He couldn't be released because when he hatched, he hatched with a damaged eye. And it's not really a good idea to put a, an animal that isn't totally fit into the wild. So 
Panama has become an ambassador for his species. Look at this awesome predator. <coughs> Just one of those talons on its feet are the same size <coughs> as a claw on a brown bear. Look at the power in those legs. Look at that incredible hook-shaped beak, which will be used to rip and tear at flesh. The flying wolf or the harpy eagle, one of the most spectacular aerial predators of Central and South America. The work that Sharon and the Belize Zoo and the Peregrine Fund are doing, protecting these raptors and rehabilitating them and sending them back into the wilds is incredibly, incredibly important. The day that we lose a raptor like this will be a sad day for birding and a sad day for wildlife in general. The wonderful thing about Turniff Island Resort is that it's barefoot birding. You can come here and just walk along the beaches and for a small island, it's got a surprising amount of habitats. You've got sandy shorelines, you've got mangrove forests, you've got some exotic forest here, great palm trees, and also they've planted some really good nectar producing flowers and plants. Plants like honeysuckles, plants like hibiscus. The island is relatively small. You can walk around it in about 10 to 15 minutes but cover a surprising amount of ground and a surprising amount of habitat. Let's go walk around and see what we can find. It's so easy, there's no strenuous hiking, there's no sweating over chasing species because they all literally come to you. All you need to do is pish for birds along the edges of the mangrove forest and other habitat on the island and the birds literally come to you. Excellent wading birds, excellent shorebirds, there's woodpeckers on the island, there are tropical kingbirds, there are a lot of speciality birds, cinnamon hummingbirds, Yucatan vireos, just a whole host of very, very special birds right here on the island. One of the best spots on the island is to bird the fringes of this mangrove forest. Right here, we've had some excellent migrant warblers. We've had mangrove warbler, we've had yellow warblers, we've had American red starts. We've also had a very unique near endemic of the region, the Yucatan Vireo. There are also hooded orioles around here. I mean, it's just thriving with birds right now. The great thing about Turniff Island is that it is really a hotspot for migrating birds. It's right over the flyway for a lot of our warblers. So in the spring and in the autumn months, it's very, very good for migrating birds because they'll stop over to this forest and habitat and rest and feed. Not only does Turniff Island offer you some world-class birding, but it also offers a whole variety of other adventures. You can have some of the best bone fishing in the world here on the flats. There's excellent offshore fishing. The diving is just out of this world. I mean, going out to the Blue Hole was an experience that very few divers will ever forget. We're about 50 miles off the mainland at an incredible and phenomenal diving spot called the Blue Hole. This is very close to the site for the red-footed boobies and this place is just spectacular. What I'm going to be doing is heading off here into the shallow water, diving down about 50 feet and then it gets to a sheer drop-off and about 130 feet down that drop-off curves back in on itself and there are these beautiful stalactites hanging down from the ceiling up to eight feet across in diameter and 40 feet in length this is going to be truly phenomenal let's go
so much beauty down there. The water is crystal clear. And this is a dive that you probably cannot do anywhere else in the world. Absolutely spectacular, totally unique, and a once in a lifetime experience. Let's go find some red footed boobies. Landing at Turniff Island was like landing in paradise. This place is situated probably about 20 miles off the mainland, but what a beautiful place. When you come here, you know that you've arrived in birding heaven. Very, very special, great people, wonderful hospitality, and some excellent and stunning bird watching. We've arrived here at Half Moon Key, the site of the red-footed boobies and magnificent frigate birds. And if you look behind me, above the canopy of these palm trees, you'll see these amazing, magnificent frigate birds all circling and displaying. Let's go see if we can get a closer look. The Belize Audubon Society, firstly, is one of the leading non-governmental organizations within Belize. Uh, the Belize Audubon Society manages nine protected areas, and of those nine protected areas, we have Half Moon Key Natural Monument. This is Half Moon Key and the geographical location of this particular site is of huge significance to nesting frigate birds and red-footed boobies. And the reason why is that this atoll runs from north to south and Half Moon Key is situated in a sea right over here. This is where all the swell direction and the wind generally comes from and the frigates and the red-footed boobies nest on the leeward side of the island, sheltered from the wind and all the elements. The windward side of the island is sparse, and as we make our way to the leeward side, the vegetation gets thicker. And what you also notice is that the air becomes thick with the smell of guano. These magnificent frigates and red-footed boobies are close at hand. Welcome to one of the marvels of the avian natural world. This is a breeding colony of red-footed boobies and magnificent frigate birds. And if you can imagine Manhattan and New York City, this is the avian version. This is a place where space is at an absolute premium. And you've got these dominant birds taking hold of the best nest sites to ensure that they can bring up their young. This is a place where every little treetop is incredibly valuable real estate. All the best nesting sites are chosen by the most dominant and the most fortunate birds. If we look around us here, you'll see these birds jostling for space, biting each other's wings, knocking each other out of the way to protect this incredibly valuable real estate. This is where they will bring up their youngsters, this is where they will lay their eggs, and this is also where they will mate. This is our golden bird for this week, the red-footed booby. A small member of the booby family, in fact, red-footed boobies are the smallest of all the booby species, but incredibly, incredibly beautiful. Red-footed boobies are fairly numerous, but they're very seldom seen away from their nesting sites, like this on Half Moon Key in Belize. The colors on the bill of this bird and the blue sear around the eyes, spectacular. I'm getting absolutely great views through these Nikon Edge binoculars. Look at it preening itself. I don't think I've ever seen that color blue. It's an indescribable color of blue. The word booby comes from the Latin word bobo, which means a clown or a dunce. Two separate interpretations for the bird. Comical, like a clown, because of those bright feet that they'll wave and display in front of each other when breeding. And a dunce, because these birds would often fly right onto ships unknowingly and land pretty close to sailors. In the early days, these sailors would harvest huge numbers of red-footed boobies for that exact reason. Red-footed booby pairs will remain together for several seasons, and it will take them about 44 to 46 days to incubate the single pale blue egg which they lay in their nests. There are two color phases of red-footed boobies, a white phase and a brown phase. Here on Half Moon Key, the white phase is by far the more numerous, but if you look very carefully, Amongst these white birds, you will see the odd brown phase bird. Red-footed boobies are perfectly adapted aerial predators. They've got in their face 
modified air sacs which cushion the blow when they dive like torpedoes from huge heights down into a school of fish beneath the ocean surface. Not only have they got these modified air sacs, but they've also got a serrated sheath which covers the bill and this acts as a cutting tool, almost like a serrated saw, which enables them to grab onto their slippery prey. Now speaking of modified air sacs, there is no bird on earth that has a more stupendous modified air sac than the magnificent frigate bird. That giant red balloon structure on the throat is actually caused by a pair of cervical gula air sacs which take up to 20 minutes to inflate. You can listen, the sound is nearly deafening of these frigates displaying. They will rattle their wings and they'll snap their bills and the bottom of the bill will actually vibrate on the gula air sac causing a drumming noise which is used to attract females from around. And every time a female flies above them, those males will inflate and puff out that air sac and they'll drum with the base of their bill on that balloon sac to attract the females. And for all the efforts of the male attracting a female, mating is incredibly brief. These birds are incredible hunters. They will scour the skies trying to get scraps or pirate scraps from other birds but they'll also pick up scraps of fish and other food on the open ocean. The crazy thing about magnificent frigate birds is that they will never land on the ocean. And the only bird that flies as much as a magnificent frigate bird is the common swift. These magnificent frigates will fly days and nights without landing on water or touching land. They cannot get their feathers wet, so they can't plunge dive for fish and they have to follow dolphin, tuna, and sailfish, and pick up the little bits of food which are left behind when those bigger predators are feeding on baitfish. What they'll also do is they'll actually pluck flying fish straight out of the air, trying to escape predators like tuna and dolphin. The Audubon bird cam is not just a useful backyard birding tool, but it also can be used in the field. What we're doing right now is we're setting up our bird cam at a red-footed booby site where we're hoping that some boobies will fly in and land in front of the camera. The great thing about birding on Turniff Island is the fact that it's so easy. If you want to go offshore and you want to go and see the red-footed boobies and the magnificent frigate birds, it's so easy, it's a short boat ride. You know, I would really recommend Turniff Island to birders just because it's such an easy destination to travel to. If you're the type of birder that wants to head out somewhere, not do some strenuous activity, but get some excellent birding along with other activities, Turniff Island is the place. As well as birding, I love fishing. And it was great to get out here with some very professional fishing guides and go looking for tailing bonefish on the flats here. I've never seen so many bonefish in huge numbers and to cast at them and hook a bonefish was a dream come true. The level of comfort here on Turniff Island was something to behold. This is absolute luxury and you're getting so much with the package here. The diving, the snorkeling, the fishing, the world-class birding right here on an island off the coast of Belize. I would like to say thanks to the people of Turniff Island. This was an incredible trip so peaceful, so relaxing, but yet with so many different activities. Turniff Island, the lazy man's birding. You better believe it. Hey, come away to Belize with me. I'll show you how simple life can be. It's long, lazy days in the sun where it seems everyone has a smile. Under blue skies and emerald seas There's warm wind in those coconut trees They say your heart never leaves Won't you bend down to believe Be happy and you